Good day, grade 11s. Welcome to this next lesson in mathematics. In this lesson, we're going to carry on working with trigonometry. And we learned about some co-function identities last time. Um, in this lesson, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be using everything that we've learned so far, whether it be about co-functions, your 180 plus, 180 minus rule, and about your identities, your compound angles, etc, etc. And what we also started doing in the last lesson was we started looking at solving uh, trig equations and we're looking at the general solution and specific solutions. We haven't finished this problem, but I just want to show you what we're going to be doing in this lesson. So I'm going to go back to looking at simplifying using our co-functions and our compound angles and everything. We're doing quite a few examples like that and also proving left hand and right angle and then we're going to move back to the general solution and solving trig equations. Okay, so that's what the plan is for today. But I do want to finish this question since we have um, didn't finish it last time. And the reason we didn't finish it is, well, I don't know if we ran out of time. What I mean by saying I didn't finish it is that it says that they want the solutions for um, all the degrees between minus 180 and 360. So they actually want specific answers. They want to know exactly when you are going to have valid answers for this thing. So at the moment, we've got x equals 120 degrees, which we're happy with because that fits in between minus 180 and 360, okay? Um, x equals 240, we're also happy with because it fits into minus 180 um, to 360. Now, we now need to look at what other answers there could possibly be. So obviously, if we go 120 plus 360, that is going to be bigger than 360, so it's not valid. But this K could also stand for minus 1. So it could be 120 plus minus 360, which is 120, obviously, minus 360, which is going to be, let's see, 0 minus a 0. Um, it's going to be minus 240. And if we look at that, we can see that's on the far side of the minus 180, so that's not valid either. So the only solution so far from that side is 120 degrees. Now let's look at this one. Again, 240 plus 360 is way bigger than 360. But let's look at what happens if we've got 240 minus 360. If that's the case, we end up with negative 120, which fits the bill. It goes in, it's in the group between, or the set between minus 180 and 360. So therefore, the possible solutions for this are, it is going to be one um, okay, let's do minus 120, degrees, 120 degrees, and 240 degrees. And that's it. Okay, again, and like I said to you before, if you had to try and solve this, okay, you're looking for, um, and in fact, you can't, okay, never mind, forget I said this. Okay, so let's move on to the next question. So it says simplify fully, simplify fully. And we've got cos of minus 234 degrees, 1 minus 2 sine squared 15 degrees sine 18 multiplied by sine 18 cos 18. Hmm. Okay, so let's worry about this minus 234 degrees first. So first of all, we need a cast diagram. So all stations to Cape Town. Minus 234 degrees goes this way. Okay, it goes clockwise. Normally you go 0, 90, 180, 270 and back to 360. But an easy way to fix this for us is to add 360 degrees so that we end up with a positive version of this, okay? But let's just have a look at it. So minus 234 degrees. Do you agree that first of all, what we are looking at is being in, okay, sorry. I'm trying to think of what's the easiest way to solve this problem for you. And I think the probably the easiest way would be just to add 360. So that's what we're going to do. And why is it good to add 360? Because when you add 360, you're just finding the next number in the diagram that would be have the same value as this. Okay, so remember I said to you, and this is what I was going to show in the last thing, if you've got a cos graph, if you have a cos graph, and let's go this way. And it goes wee like that. 
and then it kind of does this. I say kind of because my drawing on the left hand side always sucks. So this here would be minus 90. This would be minus 180, minus 270. So minus 234 is about over here. But do you see that it's in phase with this point over here? That point there is in phase with that point. So it has the same value. And that there has distance or if you want to think of that as 360 degrees because that is going around this cast diagram once okay so that there is a period of 360 degrees so what I'm going to do now is add 360 to find this positive value so let's do that oh. okay so cause of minus 234 plus 360. Okay, while we're waiting for that, let's just talk about 1 minus 2 sine squared a. Um, 1 minus 2 squared, 2 squared 15 is the same as cos of 2 times 15. Okay, where am I getting that? Because there's a rule that says cos. 2a can be equal to 1 minus sine squared a. So I'm just converting it to cos 2a and then you've got sine 18 cos 18 and we'll talk about that in a second. So let's just work out what this is. So let's take 360 and subtract 234 from it. So we're going to go 360 minus 234 and that is 126. So now we're again in, we, cause this is, so this is the same as cos of 126. It's cos of 126. Hmm, this is a very nice question actually. This here is cos 30 multiplied by sine 18 cos 18. And we'll work out what that means in a minute. Cos of 126 is in the second quadrant, okay? So cos is going to be negative, but we knew it was negative from that little graph that we drew. So this is negative, okay? Cos of, do you agree, it's the same as 180 minus, and let's see if we can get the acute angle. So we're going to minus 180, and that becomes 54 cos of 54 okay now cos of 30 if you use your special triangles do you agree that you've got a 60 a 30 a 2 1 and a root 3 then cos of 60 is adjacent over hypotenuse so it's root 3 over 2 so we've got root 3 over 2 multiplied by sine 18 cos 18. Oh, this is a very nice question. I'll explain why I like this question so much in a minute. So therefore, we can say negative cos 54 all over. Do you agree that I could separate this out into root 3 multiplied by half sine 18 cos 18? Now, I want to show you something. If you've got sine 2a, let's write it up here, sine 2a. Do you agree that's the same as 2 sine a cos a? Okay, but what would happen if we had a sine of a? If we had sine of a, do you agree uh, it would be a half? No, sorry, it would be 1. Oh, sorry, let me fix this. Um, it would be, what kind am I using? Dark blue. 1 times by sine a over 2, okay, cos a over 2, okay. So sine of a would become, so what they're doing is they've taken a 2 and they put it to the front. We have a 1, so put that into front, you've got sine a over 2, cos a over 2. So if I give you cos a over 2, sine a over 2, then it's the same as sine of a, where a is double that. So this becomes minus cos 54. Again, let's just leave this back as root 3 over 2 for a minute. And this is the same as sine of, what is that, 18 times 2 is 36. 
Okay, and now I'm hoping that you realize that these are co-functions. Chi is 54 and sine 36 are co-functions. Co okay, so therefore we can say that, and they're both positive, so we can say that this is the same as minus sine 36 all over root 3 over 2 sine 36 cancel cancel and we're left with minus 1 over root 3 over 2 which is same as 2 over root 3. Oh, okay so why did I like this question so much because there was a plus minus 360 degrees there was a cos 2a part of compound angle there was a sine 2a with a little bit of a special thing there there was the fact that you had to use your special triangle and then you had to realize that these are co-functions wow one question that embodied all the stuff that we've just well almost all the stuff that we've learned so far very nice all right let's look at this question it says consider the identity 8 sine 180 minus x cos x minus 360 sine squared x minus sine squared 90 plus x equals minus 4 tan 2x and first says first thing it says is prove the identity so what i'm obviously going to do is start at the left hand side so i'm going to go left hand side and we've got 8 sine 180 minus x cos x minus 360 degrees all over sine squared x minus sine squared 90 plus x. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to do is look at our 8 sine of 180 minus x. Um, what does that become? So we need a cost diagram. Let's do a cost diagram now all stations to Cape Town okay and then what do we need we need to say okay fine sine of 180 minus x is in the second quadrant therefore this just becomes 8 sine x okay then what do we have we have the cos of x minus 360. So cos of x minus 360 becomes, um, it's basically you put x there and then you go back 360, so it's just positive. So it's multiplied by cos of x all over sine squared x minus now please note that this is squared so that's quite interesting so sine of 90 plus x becomes just cos x but then obviously because it's squared it becomes cos squared x okay so now let's think what do we know is um, sine squared x minus cos squared x. Well, actually, do you agree that if we take it a minus, we end up with cos squared x minus sine squared x, and we end up with a negative um, of cos 2x. Okay, you with me? So we can say that we've got 8 sine x cos x divided by minus um, cos squared x minus sine squared x and why do I want that well because cos squared x minus sine squared x is cos 2x and I just want to point out to you even though that I started with the left hand side when I look at this I think hmm that's minus 4 sine 2x over cos 2x I might not have written it down but in my head I'm thinking I need to aim for a sine 2x over cos 2x okay so cos squared x minus sine squared x is cos 2x right so therefore we can say it equals 8 sine x cos x all over minus cos 2x Okay, now I know that some of you might have been thinking, well, we can work with the top already. And that's fine, you can. I don't have a problem with that. And if you're really quick and easy, find these quick questions quick and easy, and then no problem with that. But you have to understand that um, a lot of people, when they try and do too many steps in one go, they make silly mistakes. So sometimes it's better to take it a little bit slower and get it right. So now we want to somehow convert this 8 sine x cos x into sine 2x. But sine 2x is 2 sine x cos x. So we can make that as 4 times by 2 
sin x cos x, right? Do you agree? Because that's just 8 times 8 is equal to 4 times 2 over minus cos 2x. And yes, okay, that was an extra step you maybe not needed to do because that becomes 4 sin 2x over negative cos 2x. These cancel and you end up with negative 4 tan 2x. So they don't cancel, they become tan 2x, which is equal to the right hand side. Yay, we proved it. Okay, easy peasy, right? Now it says, Okay, it might not have seemed that easy for you guys. So what I want to point out to you is that if you just take it step by step, if you, as I keep saying to my students, when I see this question, I might see it for the very first time with you guys, okay? Um, because there are always different things that you can ask every single time. Okay, but if I use the rules that I've been taught and that I know and understand and I apply them very slowly, one by one step and everything else, then there is no reason why I shouldn't come out with the answer. Okay, right, now it says, for which values of x in the interval from 0 to 180 degrees will the identity be undefined? Okay, guys, when will this thing be undefined? Well, that is when the denominator equals zero. Okay, so you need to think about that. Okay, so let's get this. We've got sine squared x minus sine squared 90 plus x is going to equal zero. So do you agree that's the same as saying, what did we say? Negative cos 2x equals zero. So then we want cos 2x equals zero. So then we're going to find second function cos of zero. So let's do that. Shift cos of zero, close bracket, equal, oh, what is going on here? Yeah, delete, equals 90. So 2x is equal to 90 degrees plus k360 degrees. This is how you'd get the general solution. Obviously, we're going to fix it in a minute. But this is saying that 2x, whatever this angle is, 2x is equal to 90 degrees plus k360. But then we have to solve for x. They want the x. So we're going to divide both sides by 2. So x is equal to 40 degrees, 45. Oh my word, sorry, guys. 45 degrees plus k 180 degrees. Okay. So now we know that it definitely works for 45 degrees. If we add 180 degrees, it's going to go above it. If we subtract 180 degrees, it's going to go below it. So therefore, we can say that this doesn't work for x is 45 degrees. Okay. Right. Now we need to prove the identity that 1 plus tan theta of, over 1 minus tan theta um, equals 1 plus sine 2 theta over cos 2 theta. So quite candidly, I'm going to start at the right hand side. Why? Because I've got sine 2 thetas here. I've got cos 2 thetas there. I'm not quite sure where I'm going with this. And we could start at the left hand side. I'll tell you what, let's start at the right hand side and see how we go. And then if we want to, we can always swap over to the left hand side. Okay, so we've got 1 plus sine 2 theta all over cos 2 theta. Okay, now remember that there are, is exactly one way that you can change the sine 2 theta, but there are three different ways that you can change this cos 2 theta. So for that reason and that reason alone, I would wait to change the cos 2 theta until I've changed my sine 2 theta and see what I've got. So do you agree that that would become 1 minus 2 sine theta cos theta all over cos theta. Okay, whenever I see a 1 and this type of context, I immediately change it to, we know that 1 is sine squared x plus cos squared x. It's one of the most basic trig functions you guys learn about. So it's sine squared x, or actually theta in this case, plus cos squared theta minus 2 sine theta cos theta. Okay, so since I've got everything's in signs and causes, I'm going to change the denominator to be um, cos squared theta minus sine squared theta. Cos squared theta minus sine squared theta. Okay, so do you agree that since cos is the front and the bottom, I'm going to make cos the front and the top, yes? Yeah? So I've got cos squared theta minus 2 
sine theta, cos theta, okay, plus sine squared theta, all over cos squared theta minus sine squared theta, okay? So do you agree that this is a trinomial? The factors are cos and sine and one and one, so it becomes, and both the signs are negative, so it becomes cos theta minus sine theta squared all over, and this is the difference between two squares, so oopsie, so it becomes cos theta minus sine theta and then cos theta plus sine theta and then we can cancel that one with that one and we're left with, and I want to write it here because I need this part for the right hand side, so it's going to be cos theta minus sine theta all over cos theta plus sine theta. Okay, so that's the left hand side. It looks nothing like the, I mean, that's the right hand side. It looks nothing like the left hand side. So now I want to work with the left hand side. Sorry for the skew lines. So you got one plus tan theta all over one minus tan theta. Okay, so let's change everything to signs and causes since we dot that on the right hand side. So do you agree that becomes one plus sine theta over cos theta? all over um, 1 minus sine theta over cos theta, right? So now let's do a common denominator at the top of cos theta. And what are we left with? We're left with cos theta plus sine theta, all divided by common denominator of cos theta. And what are we left with? We're left with cos theta minus sine theta, Okay, and then what do we do? We tip in time. So we end up with cos theta plus sine theta all over cos theta times by cos theta over cos theta minus sine theta. Sorry, I made a mistake. That's a plus. And then this becomes, um, yeah, and that becomes, so that one gets cancelled and that one stays. Then basically this cancels with this and you end up with cos theta plus sine theta all over cos theta minus sine theta, which equals the right hand side. And there you go. So this is a typical question of where you move all the way down the one side and then all the way down the other side. And then you end up with your final answer. Right, now we're looking for the general solution of a trig function, okay? So we've got three cos theta minus 15 minus one is equal to minus two comma five a three, okay? So I'm gonna draw a cos diagram here, all stations to Cape Town, okay? So the first thing that we're gonna do is get this cos of its bracket angles to by itself, okay? So we're gonna go three cos theta minus 15 is equal to minus two comma five eight three plus one. So then you've got three cos of theta minus 15 is equal to minus one comma five eight three. Divide both sides by three. Okay, and then we cancel and then we use our calculator. So let's go get the calculator out. Okay, so we've got one comma five, five, eight, three, divided by three equals, um, SD button, 0 0.5276. They've taken to three decimals, so I will as well, so it becomes 0 0.528. So it becomes negative 0, 0,528 is going to be cos of theta minus 15 degrees. Okay, now this negative just really tells us which quadrants we're working in. And because it's negative, you can see that we're working in this quadrant and this quadrant. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go second function cos of this side, but we're not gonna put the minus in because we wanna get the size of the reference angle. So the reference angle is basically gonna say, right, we want cos, the negative one, okay, the second function cos of 0, 0,528. We just wanna know how 
big that angle actually is. So let's do that. So we're going to go to second function and we're going to go shift cars of 0.528 close bracket equals 58 point and I'm going to take it to two similar places now 58,13 so that's equal to 58,13 degrees that means that this angle theta minus 15 degrees is equal to now remember it's in the second and third quadrants because it is negative so it's equal to 180 minus 58,13 degrees okay plus K360 because it is still a cos graph or or theta minus 15 degrees equals do you see that it's going to be 180 plus 58 comma 13 degrees plus K360 it's both of those okay so in that case theta is going to equal what well first of all we have to subtract that so we go 180 minus 58.13 equals plus 15 because we take it to the other side and then we press the SD button becomes 136.87 so it's 136,87 plus K360 or it is 180 plus 58.13 plus 15 which becomes 253.13 or 253 comma 13 degrees plus k 360 there you go okay that was quite a nice question let's move on Right, now again they're asking us to solve, but this time they're being a little bit more specific. They only want it between 0 to 90 degrees. Okay, so do you agree that there's actually a different way that we can solve this? We don't need to use our general solutions and equations and that. And I think that's what they're aiming for with this. So let's have a look at it. Um, they say that tan theta is equal to, if I take this across, 1 comma 5 minus 1. So tan theta is equal to one, okay, and sorry, not comma five, which equals one. Um, just a second, I need to cough. Sorry, just hang on. Sorry, guys. So, but they tell us it's between naught and ninety. So if I had to draw this, okay. And I say that that's theta. And I'm saying that we've got sa, ka, toa. So it's opposite over adjacent is one. So if this is one and this is one, then this has to be root two. Okay. So do you agree that we can find theta in this case? is going to have to be 45 degrees because this is the 45 degree special angle so theta is equal to 45 degrees okay nice and easy here that was quite a nice question as long as you realize that you had to draw a drawing instead of trying to work it out using um general solution type equation okay now they've got this question to solve tan of 2x minus 10 is equal to 2.5 okay so now we have nothing there is no reference to anything so we're definitely going to have to use our general solution type problem so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to say let theta equal 2x minus 10 okay so therefore we can say okay fine that's cool we therefore have tan theta is equal to 2 comma 5 and we want to find theta so theta equals what okay now remember that tan is positive in two quadrants. It's positive in the first quadrant and the third quadrant. Remember, it's all stations to Cape Town. So we're actually finding the reference angle now for where tan is positive in both these quadrants. So we're going to go shift tan. We're going to go shift tan of 2.5 
close bracket equals 68.2. Okay, so the reference angle is 68,2 degrees. Now you'll notice that it's found in the first quadrant and the third quadrant. Therefore, we can say that two, a theta is equal to 68,2 degrees plus, now remember tan, its period is 180 degrees, not 360 degrees. So you have to take that into account. So it's plus K, 180 degrees, or it is going to be 180 plus 68 comma 2 plus K, 180 degrees. Same reason for the K, 180. Okay, so now the thing is that we're not solving for theta, we're solving for X. So do you agree that this is the same as saying 2x minus 10 is equal to 68,2 plus k 180? Or we can say 2x minus 10 is equal to, and let's see, that's a 2, that's 8, 6 and 8 is 14, carry 1, so it's 248, plus k 180 degrees. Okay, now we need to solve for x. So the next thing we need to do is add 10 to both sides, so 2x is going to be 78,2 plus k190 degrees. Similarly, 2x is going to be 258,2 plus k, in this case, is going to be 190 degrees. Then what we have to do is divide everything by the 2 to get the x. x is going to be 39,1 plus k, 170 divided by 2 is going to be 2 goes into 17 8 times remainder 1 that's going to be 85 or x is going to be divided by 2 is going to be 129 comma 1 plus k and that's 190 so it's 2 goes into 19 9 times remainder 1 so it's 95 degrees. So it's 129.1 plus K 95 degrees and 39.1 plus K 85 degrees. Hmm, nice question that one, okay. So again, what are you doing? You're trying to solve for X. So whenever you've got a complicated theta X or 2X minus 10 or complicated bracket, feel free to let that equal theta or K or P or whatever, and then see how you do. Okay, similar question, we've got solve sine squared x minus 2 is equal to minus 1.5. Okay, so we've got sine squared x is equal to minus 1,5 plus 2. So do you agree that sine squared x is going to equal to 0, 5? Okay, so now we need to square it both sides. So sine x is going to equal to the positive value of 0, 5 or sine x is going to equal to the negative value of 5. Sine x equals negative the square root of 0, 5. Why is that important? Because the quadrants. Remember that what we're doing at the moment is finding its quadrants. And we're saying sine x is either positive or it's negative. So in fact, we need to check its reference angle and then apply it to all four angles. So therefore, x is equal to, or well, let's first find what the, okay, x is equal to shift sine shift sine of the square root of 0.5 move that over move that over oops you're wrong way um and then put a bracket around it equals and that becomes 45. so x equals 45 degrees or or x equals minus 45 degrees. Okay, and now what we need to do is we now need to realize that it's in, um, okay, no, that's fine, but it, remember that the period is what? It's 360 degrees. So it's plus k 360 degrees and plus k 360 degrees. Okay, nice question. Right, now it says determine the general solution of, okay, so this is quite an interesting question. It says determine the general solution of tan theta is equal to x plus 1 over x if x squared plus 1 over x squared is equal to 1. Okay, do you agree that I could rearrange this? I've got x squared plus 1 over x squared is equal to 1. So what I could do there 
is I could take it across and factorize it. So I could take x squared minus 1 over x squared minus 1 equals 0. Okay. So then do you agree I can multiply everything by x squared? So we've got x to the 4 minus 1 minus x squared equals 0. So this becomes x4 minus x squared minus 1 equals 0. That doesn't factorize, does it? 1 and 1 minus and plus does not factorize. Okay, so there's another way of doing this. And I'm being dwarf, I really am. It's, okay. Do you agree that this here could be, this could be squared? We could say x plus 1 over x and we could square it. Okay, let's square that. So do you agree that becomes x squared plus, we multiply these together and then double it, 2 times x times 1 over x, okay, plus 1 over x squared. Okay, so do you agree we get x squared plus these cancels, so just 2 plus 1 over x squared. So therefore, this is going to be x squared plus 1 over x squared plus 2. So what have we really done with this now? We've said we squared this side, but now if we take it in context of this, that means that tan theta, because if we square the one side, we have to square the other side. So this becomes tan theta square root of, and then gets cancelled with the square, is equal to x squared plus 1 over x squared plus 2. But x squared plus 1 over x squared equals 1. So therefore, this is 1 plus 2, which equals 3. So we've got tan theta equals 3. So obviously, to get theta, we want the general solution. Remember, theta is going to be arc tan, second function tan, of 3. So let's do that. So we're going to go shift tan of 3, close brackets, equals... Hmm. Here we go. Sorry, I don't know what I did wrong there. 71.57 degrees. So theta is equal to 71,57 degrees plus K 180 degrees for the simple reason that it is a general solution of a tan graph and tan is a period of 180 degrees. Right, now it says determine the general solution of sine to x is equal to 4 cos to x. Okay, so let's think about this. We want the general solution, so we want sine to x equals 4 cos 2x. Okay, so I'm trying to think of the quickest way to do this. Oh, what we could do is, we could go tan to x, you guys give a quarter. Yeah, we can divide both sides by cos 2x. And then what do we have? We have tan 2x is equal to 4. Okay, so do you agree that 2x is going to equal to second function tan x so we're getting the reference angle. The reference angle is going to be second function tan of 4. Okay. So let's do that. So we're going to go shift tan of 4, close bracket, equals 75.97. So therefore the reference angle is 75,97 degrees. Okay. Now, we want it to be representing the 2x, and this is in the general solution form, so it's going to have to be the 2x is equal to 75,97 plus k, 360 degrees. But remember, this is a reference angle, so we've got all stations to Cape Town. And the second angle is going to be or 2x, is going to be 180 plus 79,97 plus K 360 degrees. Okay. And I'm afraid that's all we have time for in this lesson, grade 11. So we will start here tomorrow. We'll carry on with this lesson 
in this question in the lesson tomorrow. Have a great, actually, no, sorry, it'll be on Monday. Have a great day.